welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hi, I'm Sarthak and I welcome you to All Things Policy. Last week, there was a social media post that went viral. A young tenant was asked by his landlord to furnish his board results details. Apparently, landlords are rejecting potential tenants if they don't score more than 90% in their votes. And not only this, there were some other instances. Uh, there was someone who went to watch an IPL match in Bangalore and that person had a placard that he was looking for a 2 BHK. And this is not a one-off incident. These kind of things have happened in the past as well. What it reflects, possibly reflects is, it's difficult to get a rental accommodation in some of our cities in India. So in this episode, we are going to talk about that. We'll try to understand uh, what are some of the policies around rental housing and uh, what are some of the issues, what can be done better. Joining me in this episode is my colleague Suman. Hi Suman, welcome to All Things Policy once again. Hi Sarthak, thank you. Thanks for having me on this show. Always a pleasure to talk on this show. Yeah, so uh, Suman, the first thing, as in when it comes to housing, right? A kind of uh, housing arrangement can be you own the house and you stay over there. Another kind of arrangement is you don't own it. You stay at a place which is owned by someone else. You are basically paying a rent for it. So uh, why do you think there is a need for a rental housing as let's say opposed to ownership? Yeah, firstly, speaking about housing itself, I think it's from a cultural point of view, there's quite a bit of emotion attached to owning a house, okay? irrespective of the economics involved of it, involved in it, we attach a lot of importance to house ownership. But that aside, the need for rental housing is, I think, comes down to few things that are characterized in a growing economy. Firstly, urbanization. A growing economy will have increased urbanization. When you have increased urbanization, that means, I mean, a lot of your output is in the cities. And this is done through people coming into the cities. And so when people come into the cities at different, you know, economic status or, uh, you know, at different points in the social ladder, everybody is looking for a place to live. Yeah. So firstly, the need for houses itself is higher in such a situation. Second, because, you know, these are people who are coming in to, from different places into the city, not everybody will straight away go and buy a house, right? even if you can afford it. First is you're testing the waters and therefore you want to see how it works for you and therefore you want to rent. Okay. Uh, that aside, financially, not everybody can afford to buy a house You know, at every given point in time. So the need for rental housing, therefore, is high in that situation. Also, and people don't know about their future plans. Maybe they yeah, want to go to yeah, some other places. Considering we are a young country and younger population, Younger people coming into the cities, younger people coming into the workforce itself. So all of these things point to the need for a rental market because when you are young, you still don't know where you're going to finally settle down and where you want to live and all of that, right? So that is one important factor. And, you know, you have migrants coming in, you have, uh, you know, day migrants, people who come in, go, and then there are people who stay over. So people staying over <laughs> need some place to actually you know stay for the night or whatever the situation is tricky because uh, land or house ownership is very invested affair even in terms not just in terms of money but also in terms of procedures involved or paperwork involved or anything. and because these are immovable assets liquidating them are is a difficult task it's more difficult than just any other kind of investment that you may have and therefore it becomes you know it's just prudent to rent in initial stages. And therefore, the demand or the need for rental housing is significant in a growing economy. Yeah. So another way also I was thinking about is for an economy to grow, right? We need to have certain kind of clusters, uh, certain kind of urban areas, right? Where people come in from different walks of life. And this is how you can have cross fertilization of ideas, that agglomeration, agglomeration effect, effect, right? So as an economy, we need to promote that. Right. And rental housing is or availability of enough rental housing units can be one of those things. Right. So it will ensure that people keep on coming, going, they contribute and then they go back. 
right so this is how i also think rental housing is important uh, historically or culturally speaking as a society we have always given importance to or we have thought of house ownership in very sacred terms uh, given this and all our policies all our actually efforts uh, go towards you know build get owning a house there are lots of movies there are lots of pop culture that talk about this house ownership right so uh, given this situation how has the rental uh, you know housing market or housing situation in india moved across the years can you give us a a broad idea about this yeah so thanks suman for uh, mentioning about how pop culture has given uh, has mentioned has time and again talked about roti kapda makan and makan here has typically implied ownership not necessarily uh, having uh, a rented place maybe so uh, and again this is what is reflected in our public policies as well uh, so if you look at our policies policies have also tried to promote ownership of housing in case of uh, india and if you look at the data in 1961 out of the total housing units that we have had some 53% were rented units but by 2011 this number has gone down to around 28% and uh, what is also interesting is uh, who are the people who are staying in this rented places now so there are some studies which look at the consumption expenditure of individuals and they try to find out whether they are staying in rented accommodation or they are owning properties uh, it is interesting to note that those who are spending more uh, among that particular percentage of people who have the highest amount of spending among them renting out is more oh. prevalent okay. so which implies that those who are poor hmm. among them there is a substantial uh, high rate when it comes to owning of property so we would generally assume that okay poorer people do not have properties oh. and they might be uh, renting it out but it's kind of the opposite of that also there are some states right for example up bihar again lower gdp per capita poorer income poor in lower incomes now in these states the rental uh, percentage of household units which are rented out it tends to be high while states like andhra pradesh tamil nadu which have comparatively higher income in these states the proportion of people who are renting out is higher so that is also another interesting thing and uh, certain things are kind of uh, intuitive only that uh, among those who are younger among them renting out is more common so that is there now another interesting data point apart from this uh, Uh, rental housing facilities that are available what is the prevalence of vacant houses mm-hmm. now this is interesting because we would assume that vacant houses since uh, there are a lot of people there is a demand for, for household units and uh, people are not able to uh, get these uh, places on rent and that's possibly the reason why people are going to these public events social events and they are with these placards we would assume that vacant houses are not there but that is not true the vacant houses in india that number has gone up uh, the n- absolute number as well as percentage both so the vacant houses uh, i'm guessing there will be a mismatch in terms of the market that these uh, vacant houses are in so the high income high rent market will uh, have more again we vacancy. don't have very good quality data hmm. what kind of houses are vacant but there is also a possibility that there are houses out there but i mean the people who have purchased houses but they don't want to give it on rent maybe there are quality houses out there but because of maybe some sort of restrictions for example maybe i have put in all of my money in purchasing a house uh, my hard earned money but i know that if i rent it out to someone it might not be easy for me to get that person evicted or in some states you have certain regulations which prevent you from raising uh, the rents and all those things those kind of regulations are there if that is there i'll be like okay i will evaluate what are the different kinds of risks and if i'm getting the right kind of returns out of it if i'm not getting it why will i take those risks also in case of india uh, that ratio how much rent you get Versus, versus the amount of money that you have to invest in that property that tends to be very low so maybe that also is the case here yeah, but whatever so, be the case the vac- vacant house uh, total units that have increased massively and at this point of time in india some 110 lakh properties houses they are lying vacant and the proportion has also increased as compared to 1961 yeah so we are saying that rent rental as i mean renting out your own house is not as lucrative or as economically viable as probably the capital gains you get out of selling that house right the owner does not see enough incentive to uh, rent when given all the restrictions when i mean the rent that he is getting from that does not make sense when he has to look at all these uh, incentives and therefore when he has a cash crunch or something like that he would prefer to just sell it and you know be done 
and not look at the rentals because the rentals can't be raised and rentals it's hard to evict and all of those uh, issues that come what are some other issues you think with the rental market itself in india yeah so one of the major issue i can see here is uh, there are many states in india which have rental rent control acts again some of these things can be traced back to the world wars uh, it's a legacy uh, yeah legacy issue uh, so what is what happened was after the world war got over the soldiers returned uh, to the cities and as a result of which again as the sub, as the demand increases and the supply cannot immediately match hmm. uh, the demand the prices will increase so the governments at this point of time they came up with policies that yeah. uh, the rents need to be capped yeah. so you have these uh, rent control so policies I think the inflation effect from at that point in time probably yeah. made them yeah. yeah i mean uh, so all of a sudden the demand has gone up but the of course you cannot increase the housing stock immediately right so there is a demand supply mismatch and the prices will go up right there is some way by which you will rationalize and one of the thing that happened was price went up and different policies came up governments came up with their policies to ensure that uh, the prices uh, yeah. stay are they they are anchored to a particular level and different states had these kind of laws and by the way it was not something which is specific to india world over these yeah. kind of things yeah. happened now all these things have continued maybe some of these uh, rent control laws have been amended over a period of time uh, they are not as strict as they were before but they still exist they and these policies typically what they try to do they are more pro tenant uh, for example some of these state uh, rent control laws will give different kind of property rights to the tenants as well so basically someone has invested money in the property hard earned money and and someone else is renting it out but over a period of time maybe this person yeah uh, we all know of stories where people have stayed overstayed their welcome in their rented house are still paying very very uh, minimal rents and minimal to the point of being ridiculous and they just claim ownership after a point to yeah. that property right so that i mean again we have seen so many movies on that if they are not exaggerated it is something that is comes out of a uh, real life situations yeah so i mean these kind there is no minimum tenure maximum tenure so it all disincentivizes uh, private sector to come and invest in rental housing so you do not have Property. enough housing stock right which can be again uh, rented out to people also there are again different kinds of unintended consequences as a result of this uh, there is no incentive for the landlord to invest in, in that repairs, property in uh, yeah operational maintenance. maintenance all those things they will not be taking care of that as a result of which many of these properties will be in a dilapidated and state and unsafe after unsafe after a, after a certain point of time and also whoever is staying over there since it's a rented property might, might not yeah they care. yeah they might not want to invest over there uh, apart from that it kind of reduces liquidity in the market of ownership housing also if it is easy for me to evict my tenant and sell it off then again you will sell the property the ownership housing property market there, there also you will have enough housing stock but if i am not able to evict the tenant no, then yeah, so there will not be enough property over there as well so these are all different kinds of uh, unintended consequences of some of the rental con rent control laws that we have as a result of which the, the stock of rental housing tends to be uh, limited and one of the things that many in many cities what people have tried to do is they have tried to find out some loophole or some other mechanism uh, so that they don't have to mm. follow all these strict Tip. rent Rules. control laws rather they will have uh, either they will not have any contractual agreements yeah with whoever they are so in that case the tenant is not at all protected or you might have those short uh, 11 month leases they are again governed by another set of law so that is another thing that happens yeah uh, i was reading somewhere that you know i was reading that most of contracts uh, i mean 70% of contracts in the rental market are actually uh, you know um, are unwritten so that is a hugely problematic in contract enforcement yeah um, but we'll talk about all these issues contract enforcement what can be done better and the way forward itself after this short break Welcome back. Uh, we are talking about uh, the rental market in India and uh, the problems with it and probable solutions to it. Yeah? One of the key features in any democratic state is for the government is contract enforcement. And we all know that uh, in India, judicial backlog and just the time taken for dispute resolution is huge. And this has a significant role to play 
within the rental housing market itself. So, uh, uh, Sarthak, do you have some uh, information or can you just enlighten us on what are the problems with contract enforcement itself? Yeah, so when it comes to contract enforcement, uh, it takes years. So, uh, in case of India, we might have, we already know that uh, our judicial capacity is also kind of limited. There are crows of ca cases which are going on for years. We have had some other episodes where we discuss this judicial ba backlog. So contract enforcement is something which is a pain in case of India. So just think uh, think of it from the perspective of the landlord or even the tenant. Right? So they none of them would want to enter into any sort of dispute and more so from the perspective of the landlord because it is his property at stake now. If someone uh, is staying in his property, is there is any, any dispute, that person is not willing to evict, mm -hmm. uh, move out of that property, right? So, uh, if it takes 10 years for him to get that person out of the property, imagine the kind of uh, financial strain it will be for that individual as well as there is a massive emotional right. drain. Yeah, which also explains why uh, there are so many, un uh, why the percentage of unwritten contracts is so high. Hmm. Because when you don't have uh, a written contract, the landlord can evict you at any point in time. And uh, that makes the power equation different and it does, it leads to suboptimal outcomes uh, every which way. Yeah. Uh, going back to... Uh, yeah, one more thing I want to add here when it comes to uh, rent control uh, regulations. See, those cities uh, which have the lowest growth in share of rental housing, they are also the same cities which have which have been governed for the longest time under these the rent laws. control laws. Right. So that is also there. So if yes, you are having these strict rent control laws, then rental housing will not be able to take up. Also, one more thing, uh, so when, when it comes to investment in rental housing, look at the kind of policies that the that we have right now. Governments typically subsidize ownership of houses, but yeah. there is no such, for example, tax incentives are there, but you do not have any such incentive. And I think there is also a policy where the government actually gives out some kind of thing for people who are building yeah. uh, pakka houses. And yeah, so there are different kinds of uh, own subsidy if you are building houses. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are there have been multiple schemes in the past. Now also we have those kind of schemes. But here interesting point is for building the house you have it but then uh, that operation maintenance part you don't you are not subsidized. So uh, once you construct it after that mm -hmm. again the quality of housing might get impacted over a period of time. And we do not have any policy for promoting rental housing. Yeah. Uh, so that is not there. So and it keeps the big, uh, big players or yeah. uh, you know companies that want to get into property management or hmm. uh, rent. You know, this all these big things that you have elsewhere in the world that actually promote uh, hmm. rental properties. Those that corporate setup of uh, or professional setup of managing as well as renting houses is completely uh, missing in the market here right i think that is an important point if that comes in then uh, a lot of some of these issues can can get solved and i think if those come in we could also probably ho be hopeful that issues that are uh, related to discrimination like when somebody says that i will not rent my house out to Certain non vegetarians, non vegetarians, or certain other on religious basis or on any other caste basis. Uh, Bachelors are also discriminated, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so these kind of issues could could probably be solved when you have a professionally managed when you incentivize professionally managed uh, professionally managed uh, rental management companies in this market, right? Uh, yeah, can we? Um, so then uh, to round off. What could be the way ahead? What, you know, what are probable solutions to this problem that we have? Yeah, so fun is you have to rebalance the power that exists, power asymmetry that exists between the owner and the tenant, tenant. right? So that the rent control laws that we have, gradually you have to phase it out because they're not necessarily solving the purpose. So we have to rethink about that. Government policies that you have which promote ownership of houses, maybe that also uh, gradually needs to change and in fact it has changed over the last few years a uh, model tenancy yeah. laws and all those things have come up different states they need to again implement this over a period of time uh, also maybe i mean i'm not sure whether it can be done immediately or not but in future maybe you have to think of uh, housing vouchers that people from uh, weaker uh, socioeconomic background uh, those 
who might not be uh, able to afford uh, renting facilities right housing vouchers can be one of those ways and this also facilitates uh, creation of larger markets for uh, people from the weaker socio economic background because the demand might help in creating a supply now uh, next thing is uh, we have to incentivize creation of better better data databases not data databases <laughs> because we don't have, because we have been uh, creating data. i mean there are allegations that a lot of data is created we need to have right kind of databases uh, that means we need to know how much houses are vacant yeah. right now so Then all policy the, will be informed yeah, by informed that. by that right at this point of time we have data that like some 11 million uh, houses are vacant but this is from the 2011 census right uh-huh. things would have changed and also you just don't as you had mentioned in the beginning what kind of houses are vacant maybe there is a mismatch so we don't know much about it we don't know what is the reason why they are vacant uh, we don't know what is the frequency like, uh, yeah. like how frequently okay. these uh, units right. became vacant right so all these things have to be there and uh, i mean i think one of the mahatma the large solution out here is you have to improve contract enforcement also yeah i think the model tenancy act uh, provides for uh, an alternate uh, judicial setup mm-hmm. at local levels uh, i don't know how effective these specialized courts are but uh, yeah that is one of the things for uh, improving uh, you know this dispute resolution as a dispute resolution mechanism itself um yeah yeah so basically you have to ensure that the housing stock uh, increases also the proportion of housing stock which is rented out that also needs to increase because at this point of time vacant houses are there that also needs to be yeah. uh, i mean rented out maybe so and, and across income levels across uh, yeah. you know different price points i think that is the most efficient way by which you can uh, solve this problem in fact some countries uh, they have uh, vacant housing taxes i mean if you have a property which is lying vacant then For there will be some sort of period of time they will levy a tax on it. yeah So I think with this we will wrap up this episode. Thanks so much. Thanks to Thank the audience you, for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for listening in. If you liked our show, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can tune into them on the IVM podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts. on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle at @takshashilainst or our website takshashila.org.in.